Conversations with Artists, brought to you by The Smith Gallery and Fine Custom Framing. Hi, I'm Debbie Smith, host of Art Talks to You. I'm so glad you can drop in on this conversation. The reason I created Art Talks is that I wanted you to get to know the artists better, what their passions are, what drives them, how they're trained, what is their preferred way to paint, what their best media is. So when you take one of their wonderful pieces of art home, you can remember this conversation and it gives you more value because you don't get a chance to meet the artist in person many times. So we hope you can sit back and enjoy this conversation today with artist Lena Ferrara. Lena, welcome. It's so good to have you here in the studio and to have so your work. to be here. Oh my gosh. It's <laughs> just, I am, I cannot tell you how excited I am whenever I see all of the work that you do. It just makes me so happy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful to have a place that we can share art and look at other people's work. It's just, it's just wonderful for us too. Well, and I think, I think the thing with art is it lifts us. Yes. And it's sort of a, a it, there's no barrier with art. I mean, you can like it or not, but it, it transcends language, it transcends politics, it transcends any of the things that, you know, like weigh us down. It makes right. us happy. That's, true. That's right, it's you know? joyful. Yeah. yeah. So most of the paintings that I have in here are oil paintings. Yes. Is that the medium that you prefer to work in? Yes, I have tried other things. Mm -hmm. I've done watercolor and I've done acrylics, but oil paint for me is what, it's that's the the medium that makes me feel the best that I feel like I get the best results in yeah well I would agree with that <laughs> well you know what I mean it's like you find a medium right and then it's like that's what you want to hone the, your skills right and that's when I touch my brush to that oil paint it's almost like a, a shock waves go up my arm mm -hmm. and it just it's just a tactile wonderful feeling even you know just just touching the brush into the paint. Yeah. yeah. So you oh, feel like it. the hand of God is is exactly. Is, yes. Exactly. I understand directing me. exactly what you mean. Yes. Um, are you a trained painter? Are you a combination of both? Well, I uh, I ha didn't always decide I wanted to be an artist. You hear a lot of artists saying they knew from the beginning, mm -hmm. but I didn't have any talent. Oh. So I. <laughs> I can't, and I, I can't believe well, that. The, the very first um, thing that I can remember is first grade art class, and I was uh, sitting there at my desk, and the teacher's assignment was, do, do, draw something from your weekend. Well, my mom had taken us to New York City to the um, Columbus Day Parade. All right. And I thought, oh, I love that, so let, I'm going to draw that. And as I was sitting there drawing, there were two teachers walking behind me, and the one said to the other, well, it's crude, but expressive. And I didn't know what crude meant, right. but I don't think it was a good thing. <laughs> so I, yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I guess I'm not good at it, but I liked it. So yeah. I kept doing it. And then in high school, I thought, well, I'm going to try this again. And I joined the art club. And my first day there, I was sitting next to another girl and she looked at my drawing. I was drawing some horses and she said, oh, what's that? And <laughs> I thought, well, it's all horse. You yes. can see that, right? Right. right. And, and she said, well, it looks like a dog. And, you know, art's not for everyone. Well, and I thought, oh, okay, well, I guess that's not my talent, right? So, yeah. so I just put art to the side. And then fast forward, I was on a dairy farm milking cows morning and night, and I had three children under the age of four. Oh my gosh. And my mother-in-law said to me, you need to find something off the farm to do. And I thought, oh, okay, I don't know why, but <laughs> right, I'll do it. Right, if you right. tell me I'll do it, right, I'll do right. it. So I found a class and it was just painting little Bavarian flowers on a plaque. And I wasn't excited about it until that first class. And again, it's like I put my paint my brush in the paint and it was like magic wow and I thought okay 
And I think she might have regretted that because I was asking me, I was like, do you think you could watch them on Saturday right. too? <laughs> and, and, yeah. and so who milked the cows? Oh no, I still milked the cows. Oh, you did? Oh yeah, I and did. And with three kids. Yes, and you know, all the other stuff that goes with it. But, oh yeah. And then I would stay up and practice painting till like 2 a.m. And oh, then get gosh. up at 4 a.m. At 4 a.m. for chores. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that went on for quite a few years. Wow, I didn't know you were a dairy, dairy farmer. Yeah, I grew up in New York City and oh. Oh. decided I wanted to be a farmer and I didn't know how to do that so I thought well you must have to go to college or something for oh. that so I thought well I looked up the colleges that had farming as curriculum and I wound up at Penn State oh the agriculture right yeah well right. they're really good at that yeah yeah yeah. Well, my, my whole family are dairy farmers oh, in I didn't New York know that. State. So that's why I, I thought it was just so interesting. Yeah. That's... I'm a grandchild of a farmer. Oh, neat. Yeah. So, you know, it, it changes your perception about, about what you think is beautiful. Like, I think cows are beautiful. Oh, me too. I know. Any animal yes. I, I think is, is beautiful. And, and it does have an effect on your work ethic. Yeah. So I, you know, don't mind putting long hours in because I've always You're put used to it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we never um, had, I mean, all the funerals and weddings were always at 11. Right. Because you That's couldn't right. put it in any other way. That's right. So I guess it doesn't matter where you farm, that is the way it is. Right. So were you from New York City and then you went to Penn State then? Did you meet your husband there? I met my first husband there. All right, yeah. all right. And that's how I got, we just, he was from uh, near Philly. Okay. And so we decided this is what we wanted to do and we got a dairy farm and. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> and so where do you live now? Now I live in Boiling Springs. All right. So that's yeah. a very peaceful place. Very peaceful, but still uh, woods and, oh, you know, yeah. near water and yeah. I get to go, you know, get inspiration like I'm going to the farm show tomorrow so oh, that that'll I can be so much fun <laughs> to look at cows see a and... baby being born too <laughs> yes yeah. I love that yeah yeah so is that your inspiration are you inspired mostly from nature I'm inspired from the I'm inspired by ordinary everything that you see every day you know uh, could be fruit or piece of pottery or animals and that's the thing that gets my juices flowing. Like I want people to see how beautiful ordinary things are because oh. we don't take enough time to actually sit and look at things. Right. Because we're all so busy. Right. So I want to like show. This. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to show people. You know that that apple is just as gorgeous as a sunset. Yeah. Because of the colors or the way the light hits it. Yeah. Yeah. It is well, and you make it beautiful in memory once you put it on canvas. Right, right, and then you can stop and look at it. Yeah. yeah, and then it's not a fleeting memory. It's a memory that you can always look at. That's right. Yeah, yeah. which is very cool. And I get to emphasize the things that I like about it. Like I might see, you know, a blue next to a green or something that you only see when light hits it a certain way. Mm -hmm. So then I get to capture that and show it to, to whoever's looking at my work. That is a nice way to, to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, is there anybody that inspired you? Is there an artist that you like to emulate or? Well, I got to travel quite a bit. I've been to Italy and I've been to the Netherlands and I've gotten to go to the museums where um, I can look at Renaissance art and I've looked at Dutch old masters and mm. that's what really inspires me. Like I could just stand in front of the, of a, you know, painting for hours and yeah. just, just taking all the little subtle nuances. My aunt used to take me to the Met oh, every, wow. yeah, when I was a girl and I just been really fortunate that I've been able to look at beautiful art all my life. Oh, and that's amazing. And then, like I said, then you paint it and we can all appreciate it <laughs> and take it home, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is nice because I mean, Art doesn't exist in a vacuum. Right. I mean, yes, oh, yeah. you, you pay for yourself and it can be therapeutic, but unless you give it to somebody, sell it to someone, it doesn't have the life that continues. Do that's you think right. that that's true? That's right, because it's you, you, I'm just doing the first part of yeah. the work, right? I show, I choose what I think is beautiful and hopefully the person who buys it then thinks that whatever that aspect was, they want to live with it and they want to see it every day. And I get the best compliment from someone who bought a painting here. Oh. Um, they bought the apple. Oh, and he yes. said, 
I don't even like still life. <laughs> but when <laughs> I Andy. saw that yeah. apple, and it just every morning I look at it, it makes me happy. Yeah, and that was the that was an awesome compliment. Well, but that is what art should do. It's exactly. Well, it should make you feel do. something. Right. But happy is great for yeah. the way that you paint. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's what I want. There's enough, you know, not pretty things in the world. I right. Want, I want people to stop and look at what's beautiful. Well, and I think that's a good thing to, to emulate and to, you know, pass on to other people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, are any of your kids artists? I would have said no until recently. They don't paint, but um, my daughter is a pastry chef. Oh, all and right. And she makes beautiful cakes and cookies. I have a, a son who does computer um, work, and he's into 3D printing, so he's oh. doing 3D printed sculptures. That's so wild. Isn't it? Yeah. And then my other son is just bogged down in work, so I don't know, but I do know he can draw because when I when he was little, uh, we sat and would watch art videos, mm -hmm. and he was just drawing along to the instruction, and when I saw what he did, I was amazed. Yes, yeah. and you didn't say anything negative. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, seriously, do people not realize how this affects a child? I mean, it's like, maybe you should think about pulling the curtain if you say, you know, I don't think that's a good thing we instill in our children. Well, the nice thing was I didn't I, I didn't let it affect me. I mean, there there was a pull the yeah. whole time that there's I there was a desire to do something. That's what I tell my students all the time too. It's like I don't if you don't have to know how to do it. If you want to do it, you can learn it. Yeah, yeah. But I think your your palette, the way that you create your palettes, do you? Before you sit down to paint, do you think about what your palette is going to be, or um, I put out the same colors every time. Okay. And then um, when I'm looking at whatever the my subject is, then I'll I'll pull out the color from from you know that object. And but I don't I don't necessarily unless I'm doing flowers, then I have a whole different set of right, colors sure, to, to, sure. to put out because the colors in flowers are uh, more transparent mm -hmm. and brighter. So I'll, I'll pick some other types of color. Otherwise I have a standard palette that yeah. I use to, but that standard palette can make anything. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure as an artist, you can look at something and know what colors you need to mix to create that color, right? which a lay person can't do, which I, find fascinating but it is the the difference between an artist and a regular person <laughs> so you know and it's like, but if you want to know how to do it you can you can yeah yeah and you teach I do I teach I teach all types of um, beginners uh, adult beginners teenagers and that inspires you too. Absolutely. I just want, I don't want anybody to have somebody look at their um, work and say Oh, that looks like a dog, you know, when it's not. Right. Or, or, you know, that was a crude painting. It's like, yeah, that's not quite right. So um, your paintings, when you do them, what is it that you want people? I know you said you wanted people to see the beauty in what it is you're creating. Mm -hmm. Is that always what you want to put across? or um, I want them to feel peace. Mm -hmm. I want them to feel, um, I want them to feel joyful. I want them to feel like when I stand in front of this painting, I feel a sense of calmness, mm -hmm. that it takes away the cares that I have this day, that I'm not thinking about, oh, I got to pay this bill or I have to rush to this appointment, even if it's just for a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So I want them to feel joyful when they look at and I, I think I think you do. I mean, I do. Oh, good. So I'm glad I to think, hear that. I think that everybody that sees your work is just amazed at what you create. It's just amazing. I like all the different. I like to put in unexpected colors mm -hmm. too, so that when you at first you don't see it, but then when you look closer, well, wow, well, there's pink in that swan and blue, mm -hmm. and where right. did that come from? Right. <laughs> But most people, again, most people wouldn't know unless you actually break it down. But, you know, you can't create something. If, if a swan was white or if you thought of a swan as white, 
It's not because you look at I'm, you're saying there's pink and there's turquoise in there and some blues and some purples and that creates the swan and that right. gives you the beauty of the swan. Otherwise, right. it would be a photograph. Right. Exactly. You know? So I mean, because a lot of things are almost realism in terms of how you paint, mm -hmm. but what makes it special is it's not a photograph, and right. you get the depth of field and everything like that. So I like, because I like the old masters and I like that realistic look, I want you to think it's a photograph and then I want you to walk in closer. Uh -huh. And then when you walk in closer, that's when you notice, oh, look at the texture on that or the, that piece of purple or, you know, I didn't think that, you know, that was the way it was from a distance. I had a little boy come up to me at a show and he looked at my painting and he then he stepped in close and he's like, it's just pieces of paint next to each other. But oh. when you go walk back, it's real. I said, well, thank you. That's, That's the best exactly. compliment ever. Yeah. That is the best compliment ever. That's what I was going for. Yeah, and children are able to, you know, come up with what the essence is. Exactly. They, I don't know why that is, but it's true. Well, they don't have filters. Yeah. And, yeah, they're not worried about sounding right. Right, you know, yeah. So. We, should, we should take lessons on that. <laughs> That's right. Is there um, a painting that you've painted that is your favorite? It's always the painting that I've last painted. Ah. Um, so the, the, the one I think that is my favorite right now is the painting with the mule and the man walking down oh, the stairs. That's a stunning painting. Because we, I did that in Italy. I took a group to Italy uh, a few years ago and we, I rented a a convent in my parents' hometown. Oh, that is so awesome. And so we had a driver that would take us to a different place every day and um, we could paint, you could, you know, just look, you know, just tour if you wanted to. So I tried to break it up where we had class days and tourist days. Tourist days, days yeah. And, well, how yeah. exciting. That would be, that would be the best way Oh, it was it to was, travel. It, I was so nervous doing it because I thought, well, who's going to want to go see this little mountain town right. in the you know in the on the Amalfi Coast? That it's really in the middle I of nowhere. <laughs> I would. But we it's so close to everything, so we could go to Naples or wherever you know Amalfi yeah. or yeah, we went to Capri. Um, and then on the way, like this, that particular um, image came from a photograph that one of my students took. Ah. I didn't exactly get to meet the, uh, you know, see the gentleman, but later on, I I knew what, you know, it was in a town that was about right below where the that we were staying, and I found relatives that I didn't know I had uh, on that trip, and I I contacted one of them and I said, do you happen to know who this gentleman is? And so she said, no, but I'll find out for you. So <laughs> That's small towns. Bro. Right, small mm -hmm. towns. So she found the guy, and he um, is now my Facebook friend. Oh, but he cool. was so excited that someone would uh, want to paint his portrait. So it's him and his mule. His, his mule's name is Little Sparrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. And yeah, so, so we're in contact now. And he's just so proud of himself that he's got, you know, American, American person painted Who his portrait. painted him, yeah. <laughs> and will be in somebody else's house someday, too. Right, right. So, and then every person that sees it. <laughs> Right. It'll be part of their history as well. Exactly. Which I think art is like that. You pass it on. Right. You know. It's, yeah, it's a legacy. Yeah, and it's something, it is a legacy. But you think about, you know, I had somebody bring something in the other day that it, this was a painting that was in her grandparents' house. Mm -hmm. And she remembered it and she now has it as her own. Right. And I think your paintings will be the same, that you remember it, you know, as a child and then it becomes yours eventually. Yes. Because that's what art does. That's right. And I have pieces of my aunts that she had bought in Italy. And now they're in my studio, actually. <laughs> it's cool. So yeah. that gives you inspiration right. as well. That's right. Yeah. Very neat. So is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you would like to? Oh, um, yeah. Okay. I, I studied. I actually got to go back to Florence and study uh, gilding. Oh, cool. And uh, furniture decoration. And I've, you know, studied it. I went, did some postdoc, postgraduate work at Bucknell in art history. And um, even though I started, you know, I don't, I'm not formally trained um, that way. I, I still try to go back and learn things. So, right, right. And again, you can add that to your painting. Right. 
that yeah. knowledge, whether or not people know, it's, it's, it's in there somewhere. It's got to be in there somewhere. A lot of it's in, like when you study art history, um, the technical stuff, mm -hmm. like layering the paint and how to layer it and what mediums to use and not, not use in a certain layer. I think that's part of what the old masters were is so good at. Right. And it's... It keeps that painting around for a long, long time yeah. without having, you know, any kind of damage to it. So. Yeah, and that's what that's what it should do. Right. Yeah, creating a legacy. Right. And that's what your art does. Oh, great. Yes. That's what I want. Yes. Well, what a pleasure. It's this was so fun. nice to talk to you. I know it should be fun. Art <laughs> is fun. It is wonderful fun. So thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, well, thank you, Debbie. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this. Art Talks with Lena Ferrara. Some of her work is here and a lot of it is in the studio. That is the Smith Gallery and Fine Custom Framing at 190 Reno Avenue in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. You can give me a call at 717-774-4301 or you can visit my website at fineart2u.com. So we hope you enjoyed this video and please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe. Because what art does, if we're sharing it, then it makes the world a better place. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Art Talk.